Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to another children's message and virtual Sunday school. Uh, today we have a really fun lesson. Since Halloween is coming up this week, at the end of this week, we are going to make our very own jack-o'-lanterns. And in fact, that is what our children's message is about today as well. So get the kids, get a comfy seat, hang out with me for the next few minutes and I'll deliver a children's message and then after that if you'd like to stay with me we'll do ritual Sunday school I'll read the lesson out of the Bible give you some discussion questions and show you a craft for today let's do it all right guys so just like I said and I'm sure you're oh no because you're probably excited but Halloween is coming soon it's this next week hopefully you guys get to dress up in your costumes. I know Halloween is a little different this year. You might not be going trick-or-treating, but if your parents decide to let you go trick-or-treating, make sure you're very safe, stay socially distanced, and only go to places that you know the people at the houses, right? It's important always to stay safe when you're trick-or-treating. So today I brought a very special jack-o'-lantern with me. We'll get to this in a minute. But Jack-o'-lanterns, carving pumpkins, is one of my favorite traditions at Halloween. It's really fun to go to the pumpkin patch with my family, grab up the perfect pumpkin, and then carve out a silly face on it as we all hang out together and play fun music and, and scoop pumpkin guts and stuff. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's so fun, right? Have you ever made a jack-o'-lantern? If not, I hope you get to do one this next week so it's ready for Halloween. But if you have, you know that the first thing that you do when making a jack-o'-lantern is first, you have to go to the pumpkin patch, right? Go to the pumpkin patch, pick out the perfect pumpkin, right? And then you take it home and you gotta wash off all of the dirt and mud because pumpkin patches are dirty and muddy usually, especially here. So once it's all clean, you cut a hole in the top around the stem so it has a lid, right? And then what do you do? you clean out the inside, right? You scoop out all of those pumpkin guts and the seeds and all of the yucky, goopy, slimy stuff, right? One of the most fun parts. So once you have it all cleaned off on the outside and cleaned out on the inside, you have to carve a face, right? So you draw what face you want to cut out and then you scoop out the eyes and the nose and the mouth, carve them out nicely. I don't know about you, but I really like to make uh, my jack-o'-lantern and have a goofy smile. My niece likes to make them look scary. <laughs> so the next step after you have it scooped out on the inside, the face carved out, is you put what on the inside? A candle, right? Then you light the candle so that the light will shine through the eyes and the nose and the mouth so you can see the whole face in the dark. It looks really cool. So finally, when it's all finished, you put your finish jack-o'-lantern out on the front step or maybe in a window so that everyone who walks by your house at night can see its light. It's pretty cool. And you know, when I was thinking about carving my jack-o'-lantern and today's lesson, I thought, you know, this is a pretty good picture of what happens when we invite Jesus into our hearts. When we become Christians, when we decide to let Jesus into our hearts and to follow him, Jesus picks us up. He picks us up from the pumpkin patch and he cleans our life from sin. He, he, he washes all the dirt off of us, right? Just like the pumpkin. Then he removes all of the yucky thoughts and the seeds of doubt, hate, and selfishness that we have inside. He scoops those things out just like the pumpkin gets. He gets rid of them. And then he puts a smile on our face, right? When I think of Jesus, I always smile. And then he puts his light inside of us to shine for the whole world to see. We are like jack-o'-lanterns. Kind of cool, right? So I don't know what you think of when you see a jack-o'-lantern, but I hope that this Halloween, they'll make you think of Jesus. I know from now on, I'm going to think of Jesus when I see a jack-o'-lantern. It helps me, it'll help you, hopefully, think about how he came to take away the sins of the world and put his light in our hearts to shine for him. Today's lesson, or today's craft, we are going to make our very own special jack-o'-lanterns. Um, and this craft goes along with a little poem, and I'll read it when we 
do the craft, but I also wanted to read it here because I think it's really cool in it. And it's another way that we can make our jack-o'-lanterns remind us of Jesus and what he's done for us. So this is the poem that goes with today's craft. I am a special pumpkin. I want my light to shine. For I tell a Christian story with symbols that are fine. The story starts at Christmas, and my eyes are like the star that shone on baby Jesus and led wise men from afar. My nose is like the cross on which our Savior died. He set us free from sin and gives us peace and joy inside. My color is orange, just like the big bright sun that rose on Easter day along with God's own son. My mouth is like a fish to let the whole world know that we want to follow Jesus and we love the Savior so. Pretty cool, right? So I'll show you guys how to make this craft in just a minute. But first, we're going to read the scripture lessons, and then I'll give you some discussion questions as well. Before we get there, let's pray together. So hold your hands, close your eyes, and bow your heads with me, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to let the light that you give us shine brightly in the dark so that everyone can see what you have done for us, how you have changed our lives. Help us to you to see jack-o'-lanterns this Halloween and let them remind us of you. Help us to show with our lives and the things that we do and the things that we say that you give us life, that you help us, that you take care of us, that you love us, and that you can do that for everyone. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Next section, I'll read right out of the Bible, and then I'll give you some discussion questions. Okay, so today our scripture readings aren't really a story that go together, so I don't really have a children's Bible story to point you towards, so I'll just read the verses out here for you. So our first verse is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, and that says, But you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And then our next little passage is from Matthew 5, and we're going to read verses 14 through 16 here. And this is Jesus teaching about light. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Alright, so those are our readings. Uh, stick around for the next segment. I'll give you some discussion questions to talk through as a family together. Okay, everyone, I have some discussion questions for you guys. I've got a short set for some younger kids and then another set for older kids. So. For the younger kids, first question isn't really a question, it's more of an activity. Do you know the song, This Little Light of Mine? Sing it together. Number two, why shouldn't you hide a light or a lamp or a candle? Number three, what are some ways to let your light shine? Okay, some discussion questions for the older kids now. Number one. Is it possible to, and should you, keep a light to yourself? Number two, why is it, is it important for the whole world to see your good deeds? Number three, what happens to a light or a candle that you cover up? And number four, how can you let your light shine to show the whole world who Jesus is and what he has done? All right, so I hope that gets some nice discussion going at home with the family. Uh, and take that conversation wherever it goes. Those are just starting points. Um, and these will also be available on the PDF that you can download and print out at home if you would like to follow along that way at home. All right, next up is the best part.
craft time. Yay! Favorite part. Okay, so there is a printable coloring page. I just forgot to print it out to show you, but that will there's a link to that in the PDF that you can download and follow that link and you can print that coloring page out at home and color if you would like to do that. Uh, but today's main event, the craft, is our special pumpkin jack-o'-lantern that I showed you earlier um, with all its special symbols and we'll go over the poem again just so everyone knows but I'll show you how to make this. So there are a bunch of different supplies that you'll need. Um, so you're going to need paper plates. I used a white one, but if you are going to the party store or anything this week, I'm sure they have orange plates that you can use if you don't want to bother with painting it. Uh, but if you have white paper plates, you're going to need orange paint and something to paint with, obviously, which is what I did. Uh, and then for the symbols, you're going to need some yellow paper. Uh, and then I used... Uh, kind of, st I cut out the shapes and then trace them on my yellow paper to cut them out just so they would look nicer because I'm not good at symmetry. <laughs> so you can definitely freehand those if you want, but um, in today's PDF, you're going to have a copy of the poem and then there's some outlines of all the different shapes that you can cut out or print out and then cut out and use to trace your shapes if you would like to do that. So We've got paper plate, paint, uh, our yellow paper for our shapes, uh, and then you're going to need the printout for the poem, and then you're also going to need a green or really any color type of um, a pipe cleaner and some green paper. I have some green tissue paper that I used. Uh, you're going to need a glue stick, uh, a hole punch, ooh, and some scissors too. So let me show you how I made this. So first I uh, took a paper plate and I used a hole punch and I cut or I punched two holes in the top and I can show you on the back of this one. I punched two holes so I could put my pipe cleaner in but I did that before I painted it just to make it easier. Paint it all orange or if you already have an orange one then you're good to go. Make sure you let it dry before you do anything else, but if you're using a washable paint, it should dry pretty quickly. Uh, and then I use my little stencil shapes to trace on my yellow paper and then I cut out my shapes. And then I just use my glue stick and I glued them on in the shape of a face there. And then I took my pipe cleaner and I kind of made like this little hook so that and it kind of looks like a stem too, right? And used uh, the two holes and I kind of wove it through and I made some curly cues with the extra. So if you wanted longer curly cues, you could use more pipe cleaners. But I made a hook so you can hang it on a doorknob or on a hook on the wall to, to show people. Uh, and then I just used some tissue paper and created more of a solid stem there. So that is that. And then what you're gonna do, and I saved this part for the video, uh, you're going to cut out your poem and you're going to use your glue stick and make sure it gets real sticky and your poem is going to go right on the back side of your um, pumpkin here. So glue it on there so you have the front of your pumpkin and then the back has the poem that you can look at to remind you of what the symbols mean. And I wanted to read the poem here for you one more time. So this is my special pumpkin. I am a special pumpkin. I want my light to shine for I tell a Christian story with symbols that are fine. The story starts at Christmas and my eyes are like the star that shone on baby Jesus and led wise men from afar. My nose is like the cross on which our Savior died. He set us free from sin and gives us peace and joy inside. My color is orange, just like the big bright sun that rose on Easter day along with God's own son. My mouth is like a fish to let the whole world know that we want to follow Jesus and we love the Savior so. Pretty cool, right? So that's our jack-o'-lantern craft for today. Uh, and then the, 
bit warm on the back. I think that's one of my favorite crafts so far. It's really fun. Okay, so that's it. Um, next section, we will close in prayer together. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's close in prayer together. Hold your hands, close your eyes, and bow your heads with me, and let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful autumn season that we're having. Let us look at all of these fun things that we get to do and let them remind us of you. Let us see these jack-o'-lanterns and see your light shining through us. See that you scooped out all of our yucky hate and sin and greed and, and all of that. You scooped all of that out of us um, and you replaced it with your light that we hope shines for the whole world to see. Um, we pray that you keep everyone safe this Halloween, safe and healthy, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you guys have a happy Halloween and a safe Halloween. Stay, stay safe and healthy. Um, don't forget to check out our online virtual worship. You can find that on our website, pplc.org, or on our Facebook page. Uh, and don't forget, there's that downloadable PDF that you can download, or you'll find the link to download in this video's description box uh, and anywhere we post this video. Uh, so to find all of those uh, resources for today's craft, the coloring page, and discussion questions, and all of that. Um, I hope you guys have a great week, a happy Halloween. I'll see you next time. Bye!